CNBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence. Welcome back. Uh, well, Ramdeo Agarwal is our guest editor. Uh, but the company that we are focusing on now is uh, Zomato. The stock has uh, had a roller coaster ride since its listing in July of 2021, hitting highs of 169 rupees post listing. We're also seeing lows of about 40 rupees uh, in a year. But since then, a lot of water under the bridge. Markets are excited about prospects for Zomato. Stock is reflecting that. Mangalam is standing by to talk to us about the journey of what we've seen so far. Mangalam, over to you. Well, you know, as far as uh, the new age companies are concerned in that, Zomato has actually scripted a compelling saga from a blockbuster listing highs to weathering storms of new age challenges and ultimately emerging fundamentally stronger than ever before. So let's delve into the revetting journey of Zomato itself, the rise, the fall and the resurgence as it were. First was the blockbuster listing that happened in 2021, offered at 76 rupees, the stock listed at 120 and soon after hit an all-time high of 169, captivating the market with its promise and potential then came 2022 and along with it the challenges of all these new age companies i mean starting with the u.s interest rate hikes the post-covid lull in demand there was low visibility of profits senior level management exits institutional investors and pe supply as well as high valuation so we saw a big decline in all uh, new age companies share prices and zomato wasn't any different the stock hit a low of 40.5 in july 2022 but this was just the beginning of an incredible turnaround which we now call the resurgence zomato's phoenix like rise was fueled by strategic moves uh, one was improvement in their operational me metrics focus on core growth engines of food delivery and uh, you know pairing all non-core businesses out their enhanced market share further aided improvement in their overall business and that's not all you know robust growth and unit economics of their blinkit business which is zomato's strategic venture added further fuel to the growth engine as well so here's the journey of the business in numbers first up we have the food delivery revenue that was absolutely consistent and in that consistency we had a strong turnaround in their food delivery EBITDA as well from a loss of 113 crores it gone all the way up to 204 crores secondly from a solid growth standpoint the average order value of blinkit which is now a value driver for the company has crossed that 600 rupee mark and in the previous quarter itself it's turned contribution positive contribution margin uh, uh, positive and as a result of it, it's just a matter of time before this turns operationally positive as well so let's talk about the key triggers that they have increasing transactions and uh, transacting customers them also increasing their order frequency higher loyalty and stickiness coming in from zomato gold members they have you know more share than swiggy now swiggy's peak has been 52 percent now the market share is around 46 odd percent they've been improving their operating metrics of the blinkit business as well and at the same time they have a huge cash balance of close to 11,761 crore rupees on their books as well is the street excited by it are the brokerages giving a vote of confidence to zomato yes we have you know nearly 86 percent of the brokers on the street have a buy or a positive rating on zomato with the target prices ranging anywhere between 130 to 170 so that's the story so far of zomato the rise the fall and then the resurgence all right thank you that's very well put there ramangalam so the rise fall and the resurgence of zomato in fact, now we have the management of Zomato uh, joining us. And of course, Ramdeo Garwal of Motila Losfal Financial Services is sitting by with us. Uh, so, you know, Akshant Goel, who's the chief financial officer of Zomato, is with us right now. Uh, and Ramdeo ji, you want to take it forward with Akshant? You know, one other thing about Zomato is that not only in food delivery, you guys are duopoly kind of situation, uh, but uh, <coughs> uh, you have Blinkit also, which is uh, on top of it growing very rapidly. So, but then still combined as a company, you're not made profit. So... Is it a story of, uh, I mean, uh, uh, it is a story full of hope that someday you'll make money because ultimately the stock market is about a next uh, uh, a discounted value of future cash flows. So uh, yeah. what, what is your view on, you know, for how long one has to wait uh, to see, I mean, within your own disclosed kind of uh, numbers, can you g uh, guide uh, us uh, in terms of uh, saying how exactly profit and uh, profitability and profit numbers will start flowing in next five, 10 years also. Yeah, so I mean, last, uh, I think June quarter this year was the first quarter when at a company level, we were profitable. We reported a small two crore profit after tax. Uh, and then September quarter that increased to about 40 odd crores, right? So company, I think as a group combined business is already uh, profitable. And I think it's only going to increase from here. 
uh, as the businesses mature. And uh, you're right, I think Blinkit is a relatively still nascent business. It, it, we need investment in that business for it to continue to grow. The top line of that business is doubling year on year, right? So I think it will be in that phase where uh, it will take a while for that business to generate meaningful profits. But I think food delivery is shaping up well. And as a result, uh, the the sum of those two should uh, remain profitable. Uh, and therefore, the company at a you know overall level should continue to remain profitable and grow from here. But do you think Blinkit itself can be a lakh crore or two lakh crore kind of turnover company in next, uh, I mean, in the in uh, midterm kind of thing? The pace at which you are going? Yes, it's already north of 10,000 crores in in terms of GOV, top line annually. Yeah. And yeah. really speaking, it is a one and a half year old business right now, right? So, and still growing at 80 to 100 percent year on year. Right? So, mm. uh, I think, and I mean, it's a, it's a long runway, of course, from 10,000 to what you're saying, 1 lakh crore, but it's, I think, uh, fairly probable that the business will continue to scale. And, and at some point, we think it's likely to become larger than food delivery. Right? Food delivery today, if you look at the top line, from a GOV standpoint, it's about 30,000 crores. Uh, and if Inkit business continues to double year on year, and food delivery is also growing 25-30% year on year, but at some point, the trajectory of the two businesses in terms of size will cross, I think, in the next three, four, five years. And and uh, from there on, I think both businesses have uh, have a long run to go. You know, one of the comment against uh, your food delivery business is that it's a fundamentally very low margin business, 4-5%. Food business can have 20-30% uh, uh, take rate and things like that. But in uh, grocery, it's highly competitive. And the uh, you know likes of Avenue and all, they make about just about 4-5% net margin. Now, you deliver at home free of cost or maybe some charges. Uh, so how do you think of making money out of them? So our ambition also in this business, our stated objective goal has been that this business uh, should get to four to five percent margin, and that's the goal. Right now, we are not there yet. Uh, but uh, as the business scales, the gross margins will increase. Uh, we're also charging consumers here delivery fees, so that's a big driver of profit as well. And uh, uh, there is then this ad, ad sales, the advertisement spends that brands do on the platform, which also adds to the bottom line. So I think there's some differences in the business models of a modern retail business versus a quick commerce business. But uh, our view is that uh, the margin sh profile should be very similar uh, in the steady state. Yeah, Sony. Mm. I just had one follow-up on Blinkit, actually, since we're having this discussion. And I think everyone is really interested in the quick commerce space and the opportunity that it uh, brings up, right? Uh, you spoke about the potential for profitability, but I think earlier you had guided for a break-even, a bidder break-even on Blinkit by Q1 of FY25. Are we on track to meet that timeline? Yeah, so far we're on track, Sonia, on that. So we'll, we'll, uh, that should happen uh, if everything uh, is predictable and remains, the market doesn't change. So the reason I ask is because, you know, I mean, you are a market leader in this space uh, by a large amount. I think you're 1.2 times bigger than uh, Instamart at the moment. But I just want to understand in terms of market leadership in the quick commerce space, what are we looking at? What is the kind of opportunity that you see for Blinkit over the next couple of years? Yeah, so I think it's a fairly large market. I think uh, you're not competing with any one player or a particular mm -hmm. format. For consumers, they have multiple choices on how they transact or do commerce in the country. Uh, there are the local kiranas, there are modern retail, uh, big box retail format stores. Uh, there are large e-commerce platforms, and and then you also have quick commerce platforms, right? So, mm -hmm. so from a consumer standpoint, I think all of this are in a way ways to transact and buy stuff in India. And, and that overall market is so large, I think that all of these individual uh, formats will, will, can survive and become fairly large and profitable. Right? So I think the focus right now, therefore, is more on like how can we solve uh, problems or create more use cases for consumers to transact on our platform. And, and if you're able to do that well, I think the market is large enough for, for everyone to grow, right? So, and that's the opportunity which Mr. Ram just spoke about. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's the, the offline retail market is in a, one trillion dollar or more inside, right? And even if we get like, you know, one percent share of that, we'll build a ten billion dollar business. And 
today we are one tenth of that. So I think yeah, that's how we look at it. Yeah, uh, Akshat. One other thing was that uh, I think you guys started delivering gold coins also. So what are the things which are still not delivered? I mean, you are delivering food, you are delivering grocery. Uh, what are the other things Amazon is delivering which you guys are yet not delivering? Because you can deliver everything in less than an hour. They are delivering after a day or two. Yeah, so I think so. The idea is, I mean, for us, the uh, the fact that inventory should move fast is important because the deliveries are all happening from a small store. Which is located in a fairly re expensive real estate in the middle of the demand pockets in the country. So, uh, so I think we are in that phase where we are experimenting with multiple categories and and figuring out, you know, what is it that consumers want and and whether it makes sense from an economic standpoint to deliver those things or not. So, in that exploratory journey, we've, uh, we've tried many things as you mentioned. So today, you know, electronics is a large. Uh, Portion of what we sell, uh, beauty, personal care, uh, children's toys, stationery. I think these are all emerging categories where we are seeing a lot of demand from customers, and we are seeing uh, economics are also good. So I think we'll continue on that journey, and uh, you know whatever makes sense uh, from both demand and economic standpoint. I think we'll keep adding that to the store, and eventually, the idea is that uh, uh, we should be able to utilize the real estate behind the business, which is the dark store, as much as we can. And, and increase the throughput, and, and that's when the business becomes most valuable for all stakeholders. Okay. All right, uh, we'll uh, leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, just, I just want Sorry. to mention that I, for one, am I'm addicted to quick commerce, <laughs> but I'm brand agnostic, okay? So well, I, not a day goes by that I don't order on either Instamart or Zepto or Blinkit. So I must say you're in the right space at the right time, but you want to uh, end the discussion with him? No, it's wonderful. I think we have a company which is likely to rival the unlisted ones like Amazon, Flipkart, they are the big daddies of uh, e-commerce earlier. Now these are the ones who are, they have done the difficult part, delivering in 10 minutes and half an hour. So delivering in one a day, two days, five days. I think it, it is going to be a huge customer experience, the way we live. I mean, other day, uh, somebody came for breakfast. We changed the way it looks, my table looks very different in half an hour. <laughs> Wow. Because everything comes so quickly yes, now, right? Yeah. Okay, well, Akshat, uh, congratulations once again. And thanks a lot for joining in much. and uh, speaking to CNBC okay. TV 18. Thank you. Everybody. Okay, thank well, uh, Ramdeji, thank you very much for being with us here on thanks. CNBC TV 18. Thanks. Once again, a pleasure to have you with us here, sir. Thank you. Well, uh, it's a wrap on this uh, special show. Thank you very much for staying with us. More coming up in just a bit. CNBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence.